The report will focus upon the ability of new modern technology within social media to connect fans with their idols or artists. Particular case studies and examples will be used to demonstrate the theories, attempting to gain logical conclusions. The research within the report will be provided through relevant sources and documented evidence, if necessary, in an appendices portfolio of relevant materials. The current issues and performance section will comprise of the critical analysis of current issues and trends relevant to the report topic. The market will also be researched into. The do-it-yourself method will be one of the main themes of the report, which will be analysed and evaluated as to whether it is a useful business strategy. Comparisons and similarities will be made to other alternative strategies. The report will discuss how this method has evolved and why artists may prefer it to signing deals with record companies. Barriers of music business entry have become high, which make it difficult for unsigned bands to go straight to a major label. Therefore, bands had to find their own way of self-marketing. YouTube was a free method to do this. Here, fans are able to suggest and recommend the artist's videos to peers via social networking sites, where they can then comment and like them. Many produce vlogs to maintain a connection with their online fans. These are video blogs that are uploaded to their website or YouTube channel to update their fans on the band's activities. In the modern music industry market, Weissman and Germant have noted that there are three paths that an artist can take. The first is to attain a major label recording contract. The second is to accord for independent labels that have less of a mass marketing policy and succeeds with product that is somewhat more off the beaten track. The third alternative is for artists to make and market their own recordings. However, the order of writing here could suggest that the first two steps are usually taken before the latter is attempted. This may illustrate the do-it-yourself method as a last option if the other two are unachievable, suggesting it almost as a last resort. Another negative issue of this method, as noted by Harrison, is that many people now fail to realise that there is a huge amount of work, effort and time that goes into making a true career in this music business. Therefore, those who understand how to use the internet and social media efficiently will benefit the most and have an advantage over others. Weissman and Germans also agree with this in stating that the artist has to undertake all of the business functions of a label, including promotion, distribution and advertising. American band Boys Avenue have succeeded in this do-it-yourself model framework due to their proficient connection with their fans, regular touring and music productivity. This has enabled a continuous connection with the fan to maintain their likability, consequently enhancing the band's recognition. This is supported by Weissman and Germans, who states that an artist who performs frequently and who has built a good fan base may be able to sell thousands of copies of their own recording. In an interview conducted personally with them in 2010, the three brothers talk about how they self-promote their band and shows through online social networking. Our model is very different than the average band. Um, a lot of our shows we promote you know, largely ourselves. I mean, the promoters we work with are phenomenal and they, they promote, but what I mean to say is we don't have a label pushing us, we don't have publicists, we don't have radio. <laughs> so, for the most part, um, these people are here because we've communicated to them directly through all of our social networks online. Additionally, these social networks can provide the artist with demographic information about their fans' location and where they are clustered. This can assist when looking at touring opportunities and where to focus their promotion. Social networks like Facebook and YouTube have advanced to the point where, where you can actually get demographic information about your fans. You know, yeah, we use the, a lot of those, those tools on both, both sites, they call them insights. And it's just this uh, portion of the website that you can go to that just tells you all of where your subscribers, where your videos are being viewed, or you know, your Facebook fans, where they're located. That's the, that's, I mean, that's the, uh, the huge place of discovery. You know? mm -hmm. The beauty of Facebook now is a lot of people are spreading videos on their wall, mm -hmm. 
So their friend will go to see, oh, what's my friend up to? And then they'll happen to see our video there, and they'll yeah. play it from there. So uh, there's a lot more discovery happening through Twitter and through Facebook now yeah. than there was a year or two ago. But YouTube is definitely fueling that whole thing. Social media can enable fans to personally interact with their icons, allowing them to feel an individual bond, especially those fans of music culture. This technique can be seen on the social networking site Twitter. Peter Plisner quotes that Twitter attracts 500,000 new users every day. This demonstrates the vast number of potential fans or followers, as they are called on this site, that can be marketed to. Here, artists often facilitate a form of interaction with their fans through their tweets by offering some sort of incentive. One example of this is offering to follow a certain number of people who have shared the artist's music or a particular video, asking the fans to provide evidence that they have done so. Musician Tyler Ward has recently used this strategy by tweeting, I will follow the first 20 people who share our new payphone cover on Facebook and then tweet that screenshot to Tyler Ward Music. The artist wants the fan to feel involved in their self-promotion. Through this interaction of publicising their work through social media sites, the fan will receive self-gratification from their artist, consequently through being followed by them afterwards. It can be seen as a sense of honour for their idol or artist to be following them. Another similar method is obtaining fans' attention through gaining likes on another social networking site, Facebook, urging fans to like the artist's work so they can gain interest and publicity, thus releasing more material as a reward for the fans' promotional activity. This behaviour can make the fans believe that they have a special connection with the artist, as they are dedicated enough to spread the word. Relevant literature on this topic will be referred to, such as Fan Cultures by Matt Hills, Theorising Fandom, Fans, Subcultures and Identity by Harrison Alexander, and The Adoring Audience, Fan Culture and Popular Media by Lisa A. Lewis. Rock Brands, Selling Sound in a Media-Saturated Culture by Elizabeth Barfoot Christian, will be used to understand the online communication between musicians and their fans. Within this text, Davis, Delaney and Kettler note how some artists feel the pressure and difficulty in communicating with fans and how the internet has aided this. Artists with large numbers of fans may find it increasingly difficult to maintain the individual unique contact with each fan, which the fans so desire. Thus, the internet has allowed easy access to those who wish to receive these updates. Musicians can utilise the internet to spread their messages to fans across the world in an efficient and successful manner. An interview with David Chabot, a music business strategist, will highlight his views on the future development of the music industry's online presence. His main points are that record companies will die out due to the increased simplicity and easy use of the internet and social media. More and more bands will be able to use the do-it-yourself method, as it can be easier and cheaper for them, but can also cost time if the artist is unfamiliar with the technology. This will alienate the old generation of both artists and consumers, who may find difficulty with the technological advances. Chabot focuses on the idea that the online music industry needs to be simplified, i.e. artists need to focus on one central social networking site rather than flicking from Twitter to Facebook, etc. This will limit choice, therefore making the one option more popular, allowing greater trust from the consumer. Consultant Jacob Nielsen will also be referred to on usability and web design as to what web content consumers find paramount. After this preliminary research, the expected outcomes are that the internet has been and will continue to be a good outlet for artists and music promotion and peer-to-peer -peer recommendations. The only issue is that with the aftermath of how artists use this to their advantage, and whether or not they exploit their fans into self-promotional activity. Fans will always be there to promote their idols. This is supported by Bracket, 
who notes how our culture is addicted to celebrity figures, persistently wanting more in-depth information about them. In our age of celebrity addiction, and in light of our consistent appetite for the prurient side to our icons, this aspect will also be further explored in the final report. The closing paragraphs will suggest areas of future research relating to the report topic. A final word from Alejandro of Voice Avenue. Well, what's funny is that what, what actually is kind of like we killed the industry is, is the internet, but that's the only reason that we're here performing here, you know? 